in the previous lecture we saw the various consequences and the results of the first world war where we found that the formation of the league of nations was one of the most important of those consequences the end of the first world war brought the world its first peace making organization the league of nations in its initial years was very successful it also happened to neutralize and stop many global conflicts from taking place however with time cracks started to appear in the league of nations which eventually led to the failure of the said organization but what are the reasons which led to the failure of an organization that was meant to stop any war from taking place after the first world war we start off with one of the most obvious one you must remember that it was president woodrow wilson of the united states of america who in his 14 point declaration proposed the formation of the league of nations however you would be very surprised to know that it was usa which however never joined the league in the first place despite the very concept of the league being envisioned by the us president the situation is quite bizarre don't you think is like calling your friends over to your house for your own birthday party and yourself not showing up the reason the united states of america never joined the league of nations is because its own congress its legislative body did not allow the country to join the league this is because the united states was following a kind of policy in international relations known as the policy of splendid isolation which said that usa should not be involved in the politics of the rest of the world and should instead focus its own resources on its own development and not waste it elsewhere it's like you are listening to or enjoying music while your neighbor's house is burning while this particular policy was harmful for the rest of the world it did suit america at the time and therefore they kept on following it which led to usa never joining the organization but the united states of america not joining the league came at a price you see after the first world war countries like britain and france were no longer superpowers the united states of america had emerged as one of the most powerful nations of the world and the very fact that usa remained separated or distant from the league made the other countries not take the league as seriously as they should have so usa not being a part of the organization had adverse effects on the very working of the league as the other nations started to suspect how effective the organization really is and it also led to the reputation of the league falling over time talking of the other countries let's come to the issue of membership you see the league of nations while it was supposed to be an organization for the entire world to come together did not really include the entire world so in this map you can see that how the initial few permanent members marked in this navy blue color are very less and they are mostly focused and mostly comprising of the european nations so we can say that the league of nations was from a very beginning very eurocentric and it also did not have majority of the world or other nations of the world till a very late point of time so the league of nations only had a few countries of the world during the time of its creation who were its members and many countries were not even allowed to join this is where the conundrum of the league of nations come in the league of nations if you remember did not allow the nations that lost the first world war to join it because the allied nations felt that these nations that caused the war should not be a part of the peace making process that is why germany the country on which the entire blame of the first world war was put on was not allowed to join the league at first even though it was made to sign the covenant of the league of nations whereby it declared that it would not wage war on the other countries and the impact that this decision had was that these core nations with which the other nations could have by this time had a good dialogue and a good peacekeeping framework were not allowed to join the very process and therefore they were left separated now many historians claim that this particular reason to keep the vanquished nations out of the league was not a logic driven argument 
Rather, it was an ego-driven argument, which said that only the victors of the war could decide what the future of the world looks like. Now, after a certain point of time, Germany and the other Central Powers were allowed to become members of the League of Nations. But by that time, it was too late. You see, by that time, there were the rise of new and dictatorial political powers, especially in the countries of Germany and Italy. We already have talked about the rise of fascism and Nazism in Italy and Germany respectively. And we'll also look at it in detail in the next chapter. But we see that by the time the Allied nations allowed Germany to join the very organization, it became too late as it already had drifted too far from the world and now their ambitions were set for much, much more. You're supposed to dress a wound when it's still fresh, not when there are maggots in it. And that is why we see how the existence of these new dictatorial political powers, which came up because the League refused to acknowledge these countries to join or to be an active part of the very League, led to this rise, which eventually threatened the longevity of the League because these powers were in no mood to really subscribe to the processing and the functioning of the League and they were willing to ignore the League itself and eventually plan to quit it, therefore destabilizing the entire international order. Now you might ask that can the League not stop these nations from defying it or even quitting it? Well, the League did not have any real sanctioning power, by which I mean the League had no form of army or a peacekeeping force comprising of the members which could be sent to put these defying countries into check. Because the League of Nations lacked such a particular peacekeeping force, the nations did not take the League seriously. And very soon, all its resolutions or documents which it put out were treated as mere recommendations, which means that they were not taken seriously as the League did not have any military force to back it up. Now, in this illustration, you can see how the League of Nations is practically purposeless and of no use while the rest of the world are fighting amongst each other. We can see over here a Nazi cop and Mussolini himself is choking innocent Eastern European countries, while over here you see Russia is also using brute force against its neighboring countries, whereas the League of Nations, instead of having any force to stop them, is merely begging them to stop, like a person just whistling at the bullies. The whistling would not make them stop, real force only could have made them stop. Now, as the nations did not take the League of Nations seriously anymore, they decided to go much against its very mandates, the first of which was to cause war. So, League of Nations again in these situations could do nothing of substance to really prevent many armed invasions which took place during this period in the interwar period of Europe. And all these events together eventually led to the outbreak of the Second World War. So okay, here you see the Italian annexation of Abyssinia, an African country. And we also see the Japanese invasion of Manchuria, which was a province in China. So many such similar armed aggressions took place, innovations took place, and the League could not do anything of substance because it could not make all its members come together and really sanction any kind of force to stop these invasions or aggressions. And therefore, these ambitious and dictatorial powers continued with their expansions and invasions with no real force to stop them. Now, ultimately, the League of Nations failed in its very core purpose. If you remember, in a nutshell, the very purpose of the League of Nations was to prevent any sort of global conflict or a world war to occur again. It said that another world war should not take place. However, the League failed the very day the Second World War broke out and it could do nothing about it. So the League's inability to prevent the Second World War made it go extinct. In fact, you must be surprised to know when the Second World War broke out, the League did not conduct a single meeting of its members to come together. The members already had realized the League is now a lifeless body waiting to die. Therefore, the League could do nothing during the duration and the course of war and it just stayed put till the war was over. 
Now the following are a couple of illustrations and satirical cartoons which show us how the League of Nations feel. So in this particular illustration called the gap in the bridge, we see that there's a particular bridge made up of important nations, which are the nations who make up the League of Nations. Now over here we see a bridge which says this League of Nations bridge was designed by the president of USC. As you know, President Woodrow Wilson's 14-point declaration was how the League of Nations was created. However, we will see the keystone piece, the very piece which keeps the bridge together is missing. Who is holding on to this piece? Well, America has the keystone. Now over here you see Uncle Sam, the manifestation of America, is careless and he does not want to join the league. And therefore he is holding on to the most important piece which would keep the bridge together. And without it, the bridge would eventually collapse as did the League of Nations. So the absence of the very nation which created the league was therefore a very important reason why the league eventually went extinct. In this illustration, which came out in the British satirical magazine Punch, we see President Woodrow Wilson is holding out a thick olive branch which says the League of Nations. And that he is handing over to a dove. And the dove represents the European nations. You see how this particular dove is not able to hold on to this big branch because President Woodrow Wilson's ideals and ambitions, while high and lofty, were simply too much to take for these European nations which were archaic and very medieval in their thought processes. And the thought and the concept of world peace was too much for them to hold on to. Finally, in this particular illustration, we see a wounded German soldier is now standing outside a door which says the Allies. So it's standing at the doorstep of the Allies and it's saying that I am in favor of the League of Nations. So we see over here Germany which after the war was left in a very devastated manner is now practically at the Allied doorstep begging to be allowed into the League of Nations. But we still see even given Germany's condition the Allies are not opening the door which shows that how reluctant the Allies were in allowing Germany in. Germany was finally allowed to join the League of Nations quite later in 1928, around which time it was already too late as Nazism had taken a firm grip in Germany and eventually it would declare its future. Nazism in Germany would soon cause an aggressive expansionist rage where Germany would take up invasions and aggressions which would totally be against the man of the League of Nations. Hitler, who was the leader of Nazi Germany, would repeatedly defy the League's mandate and very soon will go on to quit the League itself, which would show the world the League in itself is a functionless and useless body as it could not stop Hitler in its tracks. Finally, at the end of the Second World War, when the dust had settled, the League of Nations officially came to an end. It is because it failed to avoid or prevent the very thing it was tasked to prevent. And therefore, in 1946, in the last session of the League of Nations, it finally dissolved and the responsibilities and rule passed over to its post-Second World War successor organization, the United Nations. The United Nations will go on to fulfill many of the ideals which the League of Nations was tasked to fulfill. The League of Nations ended with a gavel beat when the final speech was given, which ended in the following words. The League is dead. Long live the United Nations. Therefore, the League of Nations would cease to exist and its role would be taken up by the United Nations. To know more about the United Nations, the organization, and what it does, you can click on the link below to access the iDictionary feature. Therefore, in this particular lecture, we saw how the League of Nations, which was created with a task of maintaining world peace and to promote international cooperation, while initially successful, eventually failed in its purpose. This was primarily because of its limited membership, it not allowing the vanquished nations to join the particular league, and also because USA, the country which came up with the idea of the league, did not join it in the end. And therefore, we see all of these reasons and the very fact that the League did not have any real power of its own 
no peacekeeping force or no military or no cooperation among the members where the members itself were very archaic and their ideals were very backdated. This eventually led to the organization simply existing in name till the Second World War broke out, which the League could not prevent. Once the Second World War broke out, League's extinction was sealed. After the war, the League's responsibilities were given to the United Nations, its successor organization. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.